So what inspired you to go against that sort of river of understanding coming from our leading health departments and decide to write an article that even challenges the notion that maybe masks don't work? Uh, Dell, it's not a river of understanding. It's a river of talk. It's a river of posturing. It's a river of policy statements and, and things like that. Um, there's, there's no understanding. I don't see any understanding in what these politicians say. Uh, if you look at the literature, you have to look at randomized controlled trials, but with a verified outcomes where you've actually measured whether the person was infected or not. Not, you know, ask them if a week ago they had the sniffles and things like that. You have to measure it. If you select only those reliable trials done in a proper scientific way to avoid bias, because that's the whole idea of this kind of uh, lab design is to avoid bias in the observation. If you look at those, and there have been dozens of them, or at least you know, many of them over the last decade, none of them show a statistically significant advantage to wearing a mask compared to not wearing a mask. That's the scientific result. And what that means is if there was any kind of a significant advantage in terms of limiting your risk to being infected by a viral respiratory disease using a mask, it would have shown up in one of these very reliable trials that was done. And there have been many, and I reviewed them all. And, and there have been one or two that have come out since, and they also agree in the same direction. So this took us, I, I, I am a researcher with the Ontario Civil Liberties Association, and this caused us to write to the World Health Organization, the, the, the Director General, and say, what the heck are you doing? Why are you now recommending masks? You know, forever you have been not recommending masks for use in the general public because you've admitted that there's dangers associated with that. The masks collect and gather all kinds of pathogen-laden materials near your face and eyes and nose and everything. And then you touch the mask and you touch the rest of your body. So it was thought that there was danger associated with that concentration of pathogens. And that, that's why the, the main world health organizations did not recommend mask use in a general population, which is not a controlled clinical environment where clinicians, you know, properly remove their masks, immediately wash their hands and, and dispose of them in the proper way to just throw the idea of masks out in the general population and even, you know, wear whatever and so on is potentially was believed to be a dangerous thing, uh, make, making matters worse. And then they abandoned that and flipped it around in the total absence of supportive evidence. They used what I call substandard science, which does not use randomized controlled trials and doesn't have verified outcomes. They looked at those articles, and there's a lot of scientists writing those kinds of articles because it's easy to write an article in a pandemic. It's easy to, you know, it, it, the idea is during a pandemic, you should be able to get your scientific results out quickly to help. Actually, the opposite is true. That's when you don't want bad science, is when everyone's terrified and you're in a pandemic. You want to have the highest quality standards for the science that you publish and for the recommendations that you make, the policy recommendations that you make. So instead, they've gone the other way. And uh, it has resulted in what I think is a very political statement by the World Health Organization, which unfortunately affects governments, in particular in Canada. So we felt it was important to uh, complain about that and to point out the additional dangers to mask uh, that are beyond what was uh, said uh, uh, in that they even admitted. And so we made a long list of additional dangers that had not been considered yet. Take me through those people that sort of geek out on the science. What were the main studies that you looked at that you thought really show us, uh, you know, uh, that masks are not an effective tool in stopping COVID-19? Oh, well, they, they all, all the, as I said, if you, if you use only proper studies, randomized controlled trials with verified outcomes, they all unambiguously say somewhere in the article and usually in the abstract it, it, it also that there is no statistical evidence of a benefit in terms of reducing risk of getting a viral, uh, a viral respiratory disease. They all say it. You, you don't have to pick one that, that is particularly good that says it and the others don't say it. And for example, the, the most uh, uh, um, recent one is the one by Xiao, 2020, this year. It's entitled uh, Non-Pharmaceutical Measures for Pandemic Influenza in Non-Healthcare Settings, 
Personal Protective and Environmental Measures, and it was uh, published in Emerging Infectious Diseases on May 5th, 2020. And they're very unambiguous. They, they, they put it this way. They, if you want me to read the, the, the key yeah. paragraph, I can. Yeah, but go they, ahead, please. Would you like me to? Okay. Yeah. They put yeah. it this way. They say, all, and I can explain what they mean if, if you need me to, uh, okay. although mechanistic studies support the potential effect of hand hygiene or face masks, evidence from 14 randomized controlled trials of these measures did not support a substantial effect on transmission of laboratory confirmed influenza. We similarly found limited evidence on the effectiveness of improved hygiene and environmental cleaning. So here's the latest best study in the sense that uses only these uh, very uh, bias-free studies that says, look, it doesn't matter if you sanitize surfaces, it doesn't matter if you're washing your hands, and masks don't work. It's basically telling you that. That's what the science tells us. That's the current science. And there's good reason for that. And the reason is that we, we know, and we have known for a decade now, that the main transmission route of all of these types of viral uh, respiratory diseases is very fine aerosol particles that are supported as part of the fluid air. With, with those kinds of particles, they're going to get through the sides of the masks, the, the, even the tiny uh, wrinkles you have in your skin and so on. There's no way you can prevent uh, the, these aerosol particles from either entering or coming out. So masks are not going to work under these circumstances. And we, we know and we understand why uh, you get this transmission in the winter. And that's because these fine aerosol particles are stabilized in the air when the absolute humidity is low. And as soon as summer comes around and there's more humidity in the air, the transmissivity drops to uh, a factor of five to four or five lower. So they just go away. You, you don't transmit them anymore. So the centers of transmission are in the winter in mid-latitude countries, there's a narrow band where you get these, all these diseases behave the same way. They've been co-evolving with us, with our ancestors for five million years. This is happening all the time. It happens in the winter, so it's reversed in the southern hemisphere at those mid-latitudes. This is all extremely well understood science. It's just that the people, the science policy people that you see on TV aren't aware and don't read the top science and aren't learn for some reason are not paying attention to it but the, the top scientists have known this forever well for the last decade anyway and so the the transmissivity is understood the mechanism is understood and based on that we know why masks shouldn't work it would be surprising if they did work and so it's not about droplets, it's not about spitballs, it's not about surfaces and fomites and all that kind of stuff. It has nothing to do with it. It's all about buildings where you have fine aerosol particles suspended in the air of the building. They can be measured, they're in high concentration. That's where the transmission occurs. So you're looking at uh, daycare centers, hospitals, uh, uh, potentially places where the air is fairly closed in that's where, and uh, people's homes as well, traditionally, um, and that's where transmission occurs in the winter in mid-latitude countries. Okay, not so when you get me, too cold me, and not when you get too